All right, guys, welcome to the stream. Sorry it took a little bit longer to get everything set up. The servers were down for maintenance, but everything is back up. Uh, we have everybody here, everything's situated, we're good to go. I'm going to change some of my volume levels here. Uh, but we want to go ahead and uh, introduce everybody and talk about what it is that we're talking about today and all that kind of good stuff. So um, obviously right off the bat, we are uh, we have the privilege to speak with a Blizzard developer by the name of John Yang. So he is here and we're everybody make sure you're very welcoming. Hey everyone, this is John here. Welcoming. <laughs> this is his uh, really crazy looking demon hunter right here. Look at that. Marauders. Man, you, you want to throw me a couple pieces of gear, man? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, and then, then also we have um, from um, RTG, we have Sibco. Uh, so, welcome. What up, guys? Hey, thanks, Shinobi. And then Good finally, we have uh, Flux from, I believe, Ink Gamers. Is it... Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. I'm playing the Barbarian here, sitting around in town. All right. Which is ironic, given that I often drink the tears of unhappy Barbarian players over recent nerfs. Ah, uh, already. <laughs> and, and we were instructed not to ask if Blizzard hates characters, so I won't ask if you hate the Barbarian. But that would certainly be a good topic to touch on. You know, the whole oh, obviously there's been, a lot of, there's been a lot of nerfs and changes lately. I'm happy to talk about the nerfs. The whole back flux. Yeah. So I, I I actually had a question. I talked to Wyatt Chang like a year ago, year and a half ago, and asked him, you know, you guys have spent the last eight months buffing all the other four classes in every patch. Would have been easier just to nerf the Barbarian, you know, right after release and, and achieve class balance that way. And that never happened. So now, now we've gotten it. Did you decide to wait until the expansion for that? Um, yeah, I think for expansion time, we're much more at liberty to nerf the classes as we see fit. You know, things like Thrivon Chaos and Infinite Archon, there were problems before, and there are problems now. Um, but for expansion, it's we're much more free to nerf them. Mm -hmm. That was actually going to be the first question that I had uh, to ask you, and uh, we're actually at normal difficulty now, so we're going to switch that up in a second. But the first question I was going to ask you, because you are, you know, the barbarian guy, the demon hunter barbarian guy, is that you guys nerf the, uh, you know, viability of the whirlwind spec from Diablo three, which was by far the best fo solo farming class in the game uh, spec at the time as well. And my question is, what what kind of reasons did you have with nerfing that? And I understand the Thrive on Chaos lasting forever, like you just said, was an issue. But getting rid of the Thrive on Chaos to last forever, and then maybe because uh, we don't have Lifesteal now, wouldn't you think that would have been enough? Why did you have to take it a step further and get rid of Into the Fray and such things like that? I felt like the Barbarian was a very optimal class, and I felt like most classes needed to be... Uh, bumped up rather than the Barbarian being bumped down. So what do you think about that? Sure. Um, so Five on Chaos was nerfed, Into the Fray was nerfed, the proc coefficients on Run Like the Wind was also nerfed. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with those three things is every class, um, well let's start off by saying every class is better off when their abilities are relatively evenly balanced with each other. So if I give you 10 resource spenders for your class and one is much better than the others, you're not going to use the other nine. It's like I gave you one. Um, I think we can agree on that. Mm -hmm. um, that said, the amount of power that something like Into the Fray was giving was just way more than intended. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if, if I gave you a passive that says 100 Fury every second, I would say that's overpowered. If I gave you a passive that says 3 Fury per second, that's actually balance, and that's the number actually that we're tuning for. Three Fury per second for a passive mm -hmm. on the Barbarian. Um, into the fray, it was just giving you too much uh, Fury. Um, the permanent Whirlwind spec, it's fun, it's cool, totally don't disagree. Um, but allowing you you to do that with just Into the Fray and uh, you know, a medium ochre amount of crit was just a little too much. Um, and I know other people, other designers have said, um, you know, near infinite resource wouldn't be a problem if it took you a lot of work and a lot of gear to obtain it. But I would consider getting 40% crit and putting into the fray on your bars not very hard. Um, so that's why it was nerfed. And now in the expansion land, um, you can probably still end up with specs that generate a lot more fury than the class is designed for. 
But you're gonna have to find some legendaries. You're gonna have to get your, you know, items up to a certain level of yeah. power before you can get it. Yeah, I do That's feel like the um, <clears throat> the resource management, uh, the fury generation for the uh, regeneration for the barbarian is kind of lacking right now. But there are things like overpower, with I can't remember the passive, but if for every enemy that you hit, you get a bunch of fury, and if you're like surrounded by a lot of them, you get a lot of fury. Uh, do you feel like that's what was more intended, that that amount of fury, or is that even too overpowered? Um, no pun intended. <laughs> is overpower overpowered? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, going back to what I said about passives uh, generating you three fury per second, and that being the point we balance for, um, that's the point that we balance for because we value um, one point of fury to equal twenty percent weapon damage, and that's just mathematically how we tuned tuned skills. You know, a skill that spends thirty fury, it would deal. 30 times 20, 600 weapon damage, plus some other stuff. Um, you know, minus some if it's AoE, etc. Uh, but Overpower, that rune, it generates, I think, right now, 5 per enemy hit. Mm -hmm. It's on a 12 second cooldown, cooldown reduced, like crits, etc. Exactly. So it comes out to be something like an 8 second cooldown. 8 second cooldown, hit 3 dudes, 24 fury, divided by 5. It's like 5 fury per second. That's, yeah. you know, in the ballpark. The live okay. number is 12, and that was just way too much. Mm -hmm. um, and it's another one of those things where we want to keep all skills and runes at an even power level, so that if I want to use Seismic Slam or Rend or Hammer or what have you, it's because I like the skill, or it's good for my build, or my gear, or the difficulty I'm playing on, not because it is simply way better than everything else that's comparable. Yeah. All right. I've actually been doing my barb lately with Fury, this current build, and I'm using the passive that gives you a bonus 25% damage, I think, if you have max Fury. Oh. So I'm so basically courage. just doing I'm doing that with Overpower as kind of my AoE thing. And Overpower really cools down fast with, with um, critical hits now. Yeah. That That's one of those things, Um, you know, we have a lot of skills in the game that uh, are tuned around crit, you know, on crit, do this, on crit, gain that. Um, you get X critical damage, more critical hit damage. Um, and those are all tuned around a certain point. The point we tune for is 40% uh, crit chance, 400% crit hit damage, and about 1.5 attack speed. Um, so something like overpower, uh, it's cool because when your gear is bad and you don't have good crit, it's probably not so good. But once your gear is good enough, it becomes better and better. Uh, and I think that's a cool thing. There, there should be skills that work like that, and we have a lot. Yeah, and I'm at like 2.3 APS too. So. Yeah, that's that's really high. But it's fun though. That's the that's well, I'm, that's the whole thing. I'm doing fury with two weapons, so it's fun to zoom, zoom, zoom. Chop, yeah, chop, chop. It, it totally is. Um, yeah, people get so what, power with attack speed. What I found with the barb was, and this comes from somebody that played, you know, hardcore uh, whirlwind sprint barb. Uh, on the previous, you know, live. You mean literally was, uh, hardcore that... or figuratively hardcore? <laughs> Figur you played a lot. Figur <laughs> like like yeah, I okay. played a lot, you know. Because <laughs> that's uh, different. I was watching TV at the time, but yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know, what I found was that I, I, I went into the Friends and Family and Reaper Souls and I said, great, no more Barb, I'm quitting that character. You know, that, that Nephilim is gone. Uh, but then what I found recently is that whereas Barb's to be uh, a hero that had kind of a one-button wonder, they wanted to focus on doing just one thing really well, I found that the new version of the barb, if you kind of pick skills for specific situations, you know, combine them all together, it produces some pretty fun outcomes. So I've had success in using like the uh, whirlwind with the fire, the molten whirlwind, and then uh, combining that with maybe a rend or overpower, combining that, you know, just combining like three or four skills that you ordinarily wouldn't think of. Um, that's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's funny you say combining skills that you ordinarily wouldn't think of. And I think in the vanilla live world, you wouldn't normally think of it because three of your skills as a barb are Thrive on Chaos, Into the Fray, and Run Like the Wind. Exactly. So then you, really get to, <laughs> you really get to choose three skills at that point. Um, but the game's yeah. designed for six, and six is more fun, you have to think more. Um, so it's better overall. 
And one of the things about, I guess, the itemization change and the build change now is that you're no longer, you're finally not just thinking about passives and talents. You're thinking about passive talents, um, you know, and itemization and, and set bonuses and things of that nature and uh, affixes. You're thinking about a lot of different stuff when you're thinking about how you play your character, which is really cool. Absolutely. Uh, the biggest win uh, for itemization is items that change your build. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely guess. agree with that. I think that um, with Reaper of Souls, we're seeing a lot more options. Like you find an item and go, wow, what could I do with that? Especially someone like me, where I like to be on the more mathematical side of things. I like to look at it and go, okay, this is a cool idea. What if I did this, 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 and this, and put it with that item? Could it be overpowered or could it be you know, at least really good? And, and that's what I kind of do with that. Um, and speaking of classes that <clears throat> need uh, a little bit of adjust, needed a little bit of adjustment in Diablo 3, uh, I want to talk more about the Demon Hunter now, um, where in Diablo 3, in the beginning of Diablo 3, the very beginning, um, the Demon Hunter was probably one of the best classes in the game because it could efficiently get through Infernal Difficulty. It had the burst damage, it could kite things around. Uh, the way the game was tuned. And then it started as we came up with MP levels, uh, a lot of the abilities that the Demon Hunter has, like the multi-shot or elemental arrow, are not quite as viable for higher difficulties. And it seems like um, in Reaper of Souls, the Demon Hunter is in a pretty good place right now. Are you afraid that it's going to get to that again, where we're where the Demon Hunter is not going to be quite as good for solo farming and kind of being pushed, in, pushed into the group play? Oh, wow. Okay, so this is a big topic. Um, yeah, answer that quickly, please. please. <laughs> yeah, come on. Uh, Demon Hunters are awesome. Done. Uh, I, I love Demon Hunters. It's my I think the class. basic combat changes make a huge difference, because you feel so squishy in D3 now, and you're much less squishy now just because you don't get one shot at them. Yeah, so survivability is the first thing I would talk about. Um, okay. In vanilla, the game can very often one-shot you, sometimes two-shot if your gear is good. Um, we've we've tried to change that, and I think we've succeeded. Um, Wyatt talks about that a lot, uh, time to death and things. We shoot for a time to death of about 10 seconds if you're playing at a difficulty level appropriate for your gear. Okay. Um, and that's a very big difference from vanilla, where you die in one second, one and a half seconds. Um, because of that, things like dodge are more useful. I'm not saying dodge is amazing. Uh, I know dodge has its problems. Um, lots of problems, um, but that helps a lot. Um, and the Demon Hunter is a class, classes are all designed differently. Uh, mm -hmm. Demon Hunter is a ranged class. You get the same layout two levels in a row with the same pool of reflection, <laughs> the same place. Yeah, Demon Hunters are designed differently from barbs, you know. They come into battle with full resource so they can unload a bunch of damage. And um, that's kind of one of the big reasons why Demon Hunters are great at low MPs, because mm -hmm. if I can empty my Hatred Bar, before you touch me, I really don't need any survivability. Exactly. Um, but as soon as I hit MP10 or Torment 6, or whatever, and things take then a lot changes. longer, yeah, exactly. um, then I suddenly enter a uh, flat mode where I both have to generate and spend, and mm -hmm. then it becomes a real fight. Exactly. Um, so that's so as far as efficiency, do you think the Demon Hunter is going to be able to keep up with the rest of the classes as far as solo efficiency on higher difficulties um, as we progress towards Torment 6, which I'm sure everyone's going to be farming eventually? Um, do you think, like, and would you, would you, would you even consider maybe even increasing um, the, some of the abilities that are usually only used on lower difficulties, like, like I said, Elemental Arrow and, um, and Multi-Shot, you know, something like along those lines or um hmm. i think the reason you mention elemental arrow and multi-shot are because you're probably talking about ball lightning which hits a lot of things mm -hmm. and multi-shot which also hits you know more than yeah. a six of the screen it's for the efficient you know getting through a big pack of monsters quickly being efficient you know that's how i do all my builds it has to be efficient or i'm not going to use it and if the demon hunter is not efficient i'm not going to use it you know so um, and I love the Demon Hunter, and I want to use it. So I just don't want to make sure, make sure that that happens again uh, in Rebirth Souls. You know. Yeah, I think I think one answer is you need different skills for different different difficulty levels. If you're playing at MP zero, you're gonna want an AOE generator and a big AOE spender. If you're playing at MP ten, you're gonna want you know more single target things, things that do mm -hmm. um, maybe slower damage over time, like 
Ebola shot gets a bonus to damage good. because it's slow and has a delay. So that's not a problem if the monster is going to live for 60 seconds or a minute or whatever. Um, also, you may even want to think about taking something like Pale or Single Out passive to really help your DPS against that single target. So, so what I'm what I'm getting from this is that you would that that you're you guys are okay with the fact that some abilities are just not used at higher difficulties because you want people using other abilities instead of just using one spec the entire time, just kind of more diversity, I guess. Is that kind of the way you're pushing it? No, I think. Well, kind of. Uh, I think it's great that you can use different builds to succeed in different difficulties, as long as you have the tools to survive, uh, mm -hmm. to sorry, to succeed, um, as opposed to survive and kill things. Uh, it's actually good if you have to switch your spec out. You know, um, mm -hmm. if I go MP, MP10, Ubers, I'm gonna pick up Impale, Rapid Fire, the single target skills, Strafe, whatever. If I go MP0 farming, I'm gonna get Ball Lightning. Um, Mm -hmm. It's the way it goes, and uh, that's not a bad thing. Um, okay. I'd be more concerned if it was shown that demon hunters could not succeed because their survivability is just too low, or yeah. damage is just just too low. But I think in the Reaper's world, skills should be very well tuned um, to all be generally viable. Mm -hmm. And I do want to say one thing. Thank you for bringing back Smokescreen. We were using it in the beginning of Diablo 3. We stopped using it because Shadow Power is just the way to go. And the fact that we now have Healing Vapors, which heals us, I think is, is a really great addition. So good job there. <laughs> you play Healing Softcore, I'm guessing, right? I play both. <laughs> yeah, because I... Smokescreen never went away in Hardcore Demon Hunters. <laughs> Uh, well. <laughs> yeah, I play mostly soft court. I have a Paragon 100 Demon Hunter. Yeah, I don't play uh, I don't play Demon Hunter in hardcore because it's probably the worst class in hardcore. <laughs> like, I yeah, seriously. I <laughs> character died, so I don't play hardcore. <laughs> well, I, have, I have a level 60 hardcore of both classes, but not seriously. So when I last interviewed Wyatt, I had I, I pitched the whole why doesn't the Demon Hunter have an, a death cheating passive? You know, like the way the, the monk and the the witch doctor and the, and the wizard did. Yeah, now, I know. It could be something just, you know, you get below 10% health, smoke screen cast automatically. I which totally I noticed you actually put on one of the sets now. Yeah, uh, I actually really like that idea. I considered a cheat death passive as one of the three new passives of the Demon Hunter. Um, but uh, I'd say the Demon Hunter. Uh, maybe in addition to the monk has the best uh, oh shit survivability buttons you know mm -hmm. uh, smoke screen vault shadow power are both are all pretty powerful um, so I didn't feel the need uh, but I think it's it's totally an option for the future it's just yeah. I mean obviously it's a hardcore only thing pretty much so yeah and people I mean, like I, having I, options. I think my I think I've done six hardcore demon hunters and bad things initially happen Speaking... I'm not opposed at all Speaking like of hardcore, and also we're done with this uh, rift, by the way. Um, speaking of hardcore, still monsters here. We're not done. No <laughs> way. Speaking of speaking of hardcore, I recently found some shoulders. I can't remember the name of them because I just found them last night on stream, which will uh, make it so that you can't be interrupted while teleporting out, and you also get damage yeah. that's done to you is reduced by sixty four percent while doing this. Do you feel Water, like that type of item? Water. You feel like that item is going to be too powerful and hardcore, and it's going to be the go-to shoulders because they're just like, oh, I'm about to die. Teleport, bye. You know, like, five Aww. seconds is a long time to be about to, be about to die. Yeah, well, um, true, but there there, there is a risk uh, mm -hmm. because if you think I'm going to survive the next five seconds, let me cast this, get 50% damage reduction. Maybe two seconds into the cast, you're at one HP. So then, what do you do? Yeah, and you can't cast skills or else it resets so right so at that point it's there's some risk and reward uh i think it's a it's a fairly balanced item let's 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 do a new rift all right while we're all here in this corner yeah all right i'm going to yeah i thought it was a fairly balanced item as well because i've used it extensively in the close beta so far in the friends and family and what i found was that if you're actually going to die you're still going to die um and what i found is that you know, for the most part, it's really a convenience item. Um, gives you a little bit of extra leeway, but overall, it doesn't it's not really game changing. Well, it's awesome if you're, you know, how often do you do? Are you teleport? Are you town portaling back, and then like some bat hits you with, with one second left on the counter, and you're like, yeah, ah. that's the and part it, I really it's like. It's nice about. just to avoid that. If have you ever tried to exactly. portal out of the um, the surface area in Act Three now, right after the bridge, where there's like never not a new bat flying down now <laughs> in Reaper of Souls. Yeah. It's like you, you almost can't leave that area. It's like, please stop with the birds for two seconds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's the Barter Town Pads uh, area, I think. I just yeah, found a yeah, green hat cool. here. Let's see what it was. Exciting. 
Um, speaking uh, more about the Demon Hunter, um, I talked about early in the beta how um, the companions seemed a little overpowered to the point that they um, they could tank a Rift boss for you, a Rift Guardian for you, mm. and they if it was a melee Rift Guardian with no extra special abilities like some of them do, like they don't really just slam really hard or they hit really hard or something like that. Uh, for instance, um, what what is your guys' feelings on the companion? Do you want the companion to act kind of like a follower where sometimes it takes damage, sometimes it doesn't, or the fact that it can just literally tank a Rift Guardian for me? Um, one companion. Tanking a Rift Guardian forever and not dying is probably a little overpowered. <laughs> if it dies, it has, you know, five to ten seconds of downtime. I don't remember the exact number. I think it's five seconds right now. Mm -hmm. um, that number might need to go up. Its survivability may need to go down. Uh, that's more of a fine tuning thing. Uh, haven't, I have heard that companions, when you have like legendary that gives you three wolves, is yeah. a little overpowered, but I think, I think that's fine. Um, and it also comes down to the AI of the specific mob. Um, I know some bosses in Reaper Souls are specifically set to ignore pets, um, okay. but some of the vanilla okay. bosses, some of the vanilla bosses, don't have that set, so they may be a little too easy. Um, we may revisit that uh, in the future, the vanilla bosses, mm -hmm. because we don't want pets to, you know, just make it too easy. True. True. And obviously they scale up with your damage, but if you have that high of damage, you're not going to have problems with vanilla bosses anyway. They also Probably. scale up with your survivability, though, too. If you have a yeah. lot of health, a lot of survivability, they're going to be tanky, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so... But, but I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to put them down too much either, because as pets go in, in Diablo 3 in general, it's a fairly under... Underwhelming and underrepresented area of potential gameplay, in my opinion. So oh, yeah. I, I would... was, they were practically useless in Diablo 3. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and now, though, I like that they're better. Um, I would have liked yeah. to see some new graphics or something like that on the companions. Maybe a uh, badass looking boar or something like that, or the wolf to be bigger and more ferocious, demon like, or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, but yeah. I guess that's not on your end, you know? So, <laughs> um, well, it's, it's got it's green eyes. It's a priority thing. Um, I don't think they're, yeah. they're so bad to be more important than making other things in the game. So mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I don't mean actually the Demon Hunter pets themselves. I actually think those are pretty rocking. I uh, quite like those. But I just think in general, as a game, it doesn't have you know, a particular pet focus, let's say, like maybe a Necro was in D2, but uh, or like some other you know games have. But uh, overall, I think there's a lot of stuff that's done really, really well. But that's just one mm -hmm. anime that I hope gets revisited in the future. Yeah, I mean, just look at the companion changes. We spent a significant yeah. amount of design and uh, programming time to get that done. And I really like those. And you know, honestly, John, the reason I like the changes to the companion system is because now I actually have to think through which companion do I want to use. It's not an easy, obvious choice. Um, it's actually something you got to think about. Uh, Definitely, wolf, wolf that goes along. <laughs> yeah, that goes along with the whole uh, making sure all skills are balanced against each other. Because then you have a real choice depending on gear and playstyle. Difficult. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah it's I really bet, interesting. Yeah, I would bet in vanilla, um, ninety percent of players who use companion use back companion because it was definitely a little too good, and everything else was <laughs> a little not good. Yeah. Mm. So I have yeah, these a, days I try a bunch of different ones. I have a question getting to more, I guess, a uh, little more uh, broad questions here. The uh, gold that you currently get in Reaper of Souls, I'm sure you've heard this before. Um, it is not enough. A lot of players are worried that they're not going to bring enough gold into the game. Are you planning on um, increasing the amount of gold that we get for bounties and such, or or for rifts, or just for collecting in general? Or do you feel like it's currently where it needs to be? Um, I don't know what our target number for number and chance we want to give you per hour played or things like that are, um, but. We do have a number, uh, this is something Wyatt and Andrew worked on, um, tuning gold to us, so I'm not the best person to ask about that, but mm -hmm. it's definitely on radar, and it's something that's easy to hotfix and tune if you feel it's yeah. it's not good enough. Um, it's it's being watched, but uh, I don't really have any information aside from that. Related issue, just is on the, uh, the enchanting cost, you just changed it so legendary rings require a flawless imperial, and I amulets. And there's no more gold cost on those. I think I actually like that change. I read an article about that a couple of days ago. People were debating it, but it seems like the bottleneck is now meant to be gems. You need nine marquee gems to to enchant those instead of just whatever gold you have lying around. 
Oh yeah, um, having different costs for things is good. Um, it gives you an option, you know, if I have for some reason way too many gems, I can enchant rings and amulets instead of something else. Well, we have way too many gems after two months of beta and just stacking them up, but yeah. I can see at launch when you need nine marquee every time you want to make this enchant, if you, you're not going to have 500 of them built up, so. Uh, that might be a tuning issue. Um, I guess I'll keep an eye out for that, or ask Andrew to. I think it's a good change. I mean, it's it's, it's just a different bottleneck. I, I assume that was part of you guys' general urge to make gold less essential and less valuable, so people who bring over 10 billion from Diablo 3 will, will not have a huge advantage. Um, well, people who come over from Diablo 3 with a bunch of gold, uh, our gold sink for them is increasing costs on enchanting a single item. So. Hopefully that but, works. But those have gone down steadily over the beta. I mean, it was like 2 million for an amulet at the start of the beta. And now yeah. it's like 40k. Yeah, well, uh, I don't mean that. I don't mean increasing over time in the beta patch cycle. I mean, if I enchant this item once, it costs X, and the next time it costs X plus yeah. more, and then more, and then more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. speaking, of, uh, speaking of the Mystic, though, um, I did have a uh, question. The... Uh, right now in the game, if you want to switch out an item, uh, you can see what it's going to do for you, benefit you wise. You can say, this is going to give me more damage, this is going to give me more health or toughness and stuff like that. But when you're doing the Mystic, and you go, well, should I get attack speed or should I get crit chance or should I get average damage or should I get attack speed? You can't see what kind of benefit you would get. And you just kind of have to hope, is this an upgrade when you're doing the Mystic and enchanting? Uh, is that something you guys are going to maybe give us a feature so that we can... Um, you know, be able to see that kind of change so we don't have to risk the gold and, you know, risk the, the materials? Hmm, that's definitely a possibility. Um, I wouldn't consider that a high feature because it's programming time, it's probably some UI time. Um, mm -hmm. but I think that that's not unreasonable. That sounds like something that would be useful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just a green red preview kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that sounds useful. Just gonna be like, this will give you a little upgrade, and you're like, oh, nice, I'll, I'll re-roll to this, you know, and it helps you out, so. Well, it reminds you of the early days of the auction house, where there was oh, no yeah. comparison, and you just oh, had to kind yeah. of guess. It's like, is mm -hmm. this better? I... Oh, I had spreadsheets. I would, I, I, I would type in all of the, all of the, <laughs> all of the stuff, and I would be like, okay, this is an upgrade, this isn't an upgrade, and stuff like that, until you guys actually just did it for me. So, <laughs> that's oh, what yeah. I had to do. <laughs> I had spreadsheets, I had websites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And John, so uh, this zip code again, I got a question for you on itemization. Sure, go for it. If you don't mind. Um, one of the, I wouldn't say it's a complaint, but one of the observations I've heard sort of stated in previous um, interviews with devs and, you know, be interested in your perspective, given you do it, Blizzard, would be the, the progression of the items that you get as a player. So you play your Demon Hunter, or you play your Varian or whatever, and as the game progresses, you find items, and every so often, there's timers and all the rest of it. How happy are you with where things are in terms of the way an average player, not a casual, not a hardcore, but an average player, progresses through the item find experience, you know, how they go from being a fairly, you know, relatively speaking, Nephilim, all the way through to being a, uh, you know, Torment 6 face roll Nephilim. Um, how do you feel that that is playing out right now in terms of starting out with basic items, going to yellow items, getting legendaries and completing set? Um, well, That's a big uh, question. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think, yeah. I mean, progression is obviously the main part of this game, uh, the item progression specifically. Yeah. Um, it's going to happen at a certain rate, and we can tune that through legendary drop rates. Um, and I feel like it's, it's pretty good. Um, obviously, the faster we drop items, the more quickly you're going to find them, and the more, the more quickly you're going to run out of uh, upgrades to find and the time to the next upgrade is also going to increase because when an item drops there's less chance that it's a good item for you or better than what you currently have mm -hmm. um so there's a number between you know zero and a hundred on that scale mm -hmm. that we can drag around to say players you know it's going to take a player one hour to find the next upgrade after they played for x hours and yeah. that's a number we've been tuning and it's purely Based on based on a uh, legendary drop rate, and I, I think it's pretty good right now. Um, there's lots of legendaries out there. I'm sure we'll be adding more in the future. Um, sets 
um, the rare items. There's always things to chase. Um, I haven't really heard any complaints about. Uh, sorry, I take that back. Um, I haven't. <laughs> you give for complaints. I've heard complaints, complaints about everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> there will be complaints about everything. Um, I don't think it's a problem right now, and I feel like I really like the place where it's at. Yeah. Um, We'll see after I play for 500 hours if I think uh, differently. But um, based on our numbers and our calculations, you should be able to play this game for a long time and not have all the best items you want for you know the best set items and things like that. Yeah, I, I mean I think for me a, a big part of what keeps a player playing is the concept of gaining equity, right? So you want to you're gaining equity as a player in the game, and I think that in Diablo 3 the way you do that is through gaining items that give you either different ways to play the game or, or different level of power. So I definitely think you're right. There has to be a balance there that keeps that chase going while at the same time gives you that feeling of equity and development, you know? So. Yeah, we, we talked about this a lot um, during our discussions on legendary items. We had weekly meetings for, for months with all the people who were relevant. Um, and we, we thought about, you know, are there ways which you can design the drop system where the time until the next upgrade stays constant for the rest of the time. And uh, that's a hard problem to solve. Um, and I think unless we did some really hacky ways to, to make that work, I mean, there are hacky ways to make that work. Um, like, you require 100,000 damage to find this item, and you require 150,000 to find the next item. Um, but that doesn't feel like Diablo, and it's just a little too messy to feel right. So we didn't do yeah. something like that. I, I don't like that concept personally. I don't like uh, a definitive fixed static, you know, progression rate. I, I think that's unwelcome because it uh, takes away from the feeling of uh, randomness, which in the right amount adds a ton of value to the game. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's really important. Obviously, that would put a huge priority on uh, DPS too. But, you know, yeah. hardcore players who want yeah. to be defensive. Um, and we really want, we definitely want players to have the feeling that at any moment I could find the best item in the game for all exactly. the rest of the time. Even though yeah, as long as you're on a tournament. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. That's that's a different problem and it, I think it's fine. At yeah. moment one. And uh, uh, speaking of legendaries as we're talking about them right now, um, as you've noticed, and as many people have noticed in the game, there are a lot of legendaries that don't have special properties, and also the crafting legendaries seem to be very lacking. Are we going to see anything in the future that is going to maybe bring us new legendaries, maybe even by launch, or maybe in a, a patch before launch on beta? Um, or is it, or are we just like, this is what you see is what you get right now? Oh, uh, by launch, uh, that's... Um, out of scope. That's really not going to happen. Um, in the future, you know, content patches and stuff, we will definitely be adding more legendaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the legendaries without powers, that's, that was really just a production type thing. Um, I made many of the legendary powers myself, along with lots of help from our programmers and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how much we can do, um, given the time we have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 the reason why I bring it up is because Josh Mascara actually talked about in, in, uh, in an interview that, uh, and also at BlizzCon, that when you get a legendary, they want you want you you want us to feel you want it to make it feel like it is a legendary moment, like oh my god, this is it, like this is the item, you know, like I've been farming all night long, and I want to be rewarded here, like, you know, uh, as you were kind of talking about a little bit earlier, but. That's why I bring up that point is because, you know, if more items had more special properties or even if a pattern dropped and you said, oh, okay, I can make this item, but I'm not going to because it's going to be crappy. You know, it's like, um, it maybe, uh, like, uh, for instance, there's actually an item in my stash right now. I found a crossbow last night that the max damage that it can roll on it is equal to what the max damage of one hand legendary can roll on it. And that seems not correct at all, you know? Like, it seems uh, like the crafted items are a little lower than they should be. Crafted items should roll in the same ranges as legendaries, if that crafted item is a legendary. Mm -hmm. um, I'd, I'd have to ask you to repeat that again, but the way you put it, it sounds like a bug. Um, mm -hmm. I can but... show you, when we go back to town, I'll show you the item itself, but uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. A, it, yeah. Given two legendary items, um, if they're both level 70 and one is crafted and one is dropped, they should have the same max damage roll. They should have the same max roll for everything, mm -hmm. if they're the same slot. Um, 
crafted items are not meant to be worse. And if they are, that's a bug. Mm -hmm. A few of the weapons now, I notice, have like 15% cold or fire damage as an inherent. They're not all just, you know, six random stats anymore. So it seems like you guys are getting a little bit of the, you know, giving them some flavor and some variety now. Oh, absolutely. Um, flavor just is takes time important. to get it all done. Yeah, um, it really depends on if it makes sense, you know. I think there's a, it's like a frost orb that has um, a legendary power that does something with um, frozen frost nova. Um, and it makes sense, so we put cold damage on it. And if it looks like an arcane item, we put some arcane damage on it. Um, when it makes sense thematically, we try very hard to make it, make the item fit the theme of the item and the lore and what it looks like and everything. But, uh, you know, some of the items that are more generic looking, uh, it doesn't always work. But we've definitely had some big wins there when it does match. On uh, crafting costs, currently some of the sets require a flawless royal diamond, which is uh, about 10 million to make. Is that going to stay that way? Or it's, it mm -hmm. seems really arbitrary, like like some of the Kane's items do and a few others, but then lots of stuff doesn't require any gem at all, and it's like a really wild price differential. Yeah, uh, gems were put, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Andrew put them there as a replacement for the gold cost. I would bet the ones that take a gem don't cause gold because, uh, well, they shouldn't because I don't, Yeah, but I mean, even if it does, it, that's 10 million gold for that gem versus yeah, you know, like 100k or something. That, that might be a, a tuning point and a tuning problem. Um, yeah, that's, that's about But at the I same think. time, that wouldn't be as much of a problem if we had more viable ways of making gold in the game. You would be like, ah, 10 million, no big deal if you're making, you know... 30 million per hour or something like that, right? So, uh, you know. Well, we don't want to give players so much gold that it becomes irrelevant because yeah. I think the important um, question like, is the ratio of co the cost to make that gem um, to the cost to craft an item that doesn't cost a gem, the gold cost. Uh, if that ratio is more in line with each other, I think we're good. And then we can tune gold drop rates around that. At the current levels, it looks like, it sounds like, uh, the items that cause gold to enchant, sorry, cause gems to enchant or craft are a little out of line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, related quick... on, on legendary materials, though, that, that's also a really variable thing. I mean, some of them I have like 10 and 12, and other ones I've never seen once. And it seems like <laughs> if that was correlated with, you know, the scarcity was correlated with the value, it would make more sense. But as it is, it's just sort of arbitrary, it seems like. I guess it's just mm. more tuning passes needed. I have a theory on that, but I wasn't involved in any of the crafting stuff. Andrew kind of solos that. Uh, I don't think any of the crafting materials have lower drop rates. They might. I could be just making stuff up, but... Well, frequency maybe... of where... I mean, I'm looking at my stash now. I have 13, 11, and 9 of three of them, and then a bunch of the others, I just have one of each. Yeah, I think it's a more of where you end up playing because of the bounties and stuff. If you happen to see the dude, you kill him, you get the thing and then you end up with a lot more of them. Um, and maybe the uniques that are harder to find or the ones you don't encounter in normal play, you have less of them. So yeah. that can also be, that could maybe be changed via placement of a monster, but I don't know if tuning the drop rate would be the right answer because then you can always farm it, right? You know, if you really wanted this item, you could farm him, find him specifically. So maybe changing the drop rates isn't the right answer. I, I think the drop. I like variable drop rates. I just think that if if there's going to be ones that are really rarely found, that should be the ones that are have on the most powerful lot, potential items. And totally agree with that. There doesn't like there's any there's not like there's any correlation between it now. Totally agree with rarity equals power. Um, I do not know what the rarity is on those, or the power level of a lot of the crafted items. So uh, I, the the items that actually linked in the chat right there, you can see that the one hand oh, Odin's son. If you look at the potential on it, it can go up to 1490 lightning damage. And if you look at the two hand that I just found, it can go up to 1490 uh, poison damage there. And that's one way of increasing your damage on your on your weapon is by doing that. Is that is that a bug? Is that intended? Is or is it were you allowed to get uh, supposed, supposed to get higher? Uh, I can't see the the roll ranges in chat apparently. Oh, Maybe can. my. If you click on it and you just push like control while you're clicking, I think it might work. But nah, yeah. it, it doesn't work. Uh, maybe only oh. I can see it or something. Oh, I have to hold down control. Yeah, you hold I'm... control then click. Yeah. Um. Just just drop the item and let him look at it. Oh wait. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if you found it now. Um. Mm -hmm. 
No, yeah, these are all ranges. For. If the roll range is wrong, it's a bug. If it's not, it's not a bug. Uh, it looks like the lightning and poison damage max rolls are the same to me. Is mm -hmm. that what you're talking about? Yeah, and one of them's a two-hander and one of them's a one-hander, so... Ah. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like a bug. Um, yeah. We have different affixes for one-handers and two-handers, and maybe one of them has the wrong one. It's mm -hmm. very possible. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good that you're at least looking into those things and such, so, you know, makes me feel better that... Uh, two-handers would be more viable. As you know, with the Demon Hunter, one advantage the Demon Hunter has had is the fact that um, we have a crossbow or a bow, and then we also have a quiver, whereas the Barbarian classes like that um, only have just the two-hander. So, you know, it seemed more viable for a Demon Hunter to use a two-hander over dual wielding. Um, do, you, do you think that dual wielding is going to be uh, more viable for the Demon Hunter in Reaper of Souls, um, or is uh, two hand still going to be the way to go? Um, the problem is very different for the Barbarian Demon Hunter because of the Quiver. Mm -hmm. um, barbarians can't use a, a two hand in the main hand and you know, a one hander in the off hand or something like that. Um, for the Demon Hunter, it's a problem that the Quivers are so good, specifically Dead Man's Legacy. Also, specifically, that it was easable, easily buyable in the auction house. Mm -hmm. um, disregarding that, I think quivers are still really powerful. They give 20% attack speed and all these stats. So it's really uh, kind of stupid to take a one-hander and a quiver in Vanilla Land. Um, in expansion, I've taken some. St I took some steps to try to close the gap between the two playstyles. Um, one of them is for ranged weapons only, uh, but we reduce the gap in damage between one-handers and two-handers. So two-hand crossbows and one-hand crossbows. Mm -hmm. Very specifically, because demon hunters can use quivers. We're not planning to change that, so we just tune around it. Um, also, you know, for things like archery, um, there was a bonus for one hand crossbow, but there wasn't for second one, so I just added a bonus. The bonus may may not be enough, we'll see. Um, but as other people have said, I think what's really going to drive people to use one weapon over the other is ultimately the legendary power. Um, I think there are compelling enough legendaries that are one-hander and two-hander that you just use whatever you find. And I think that's okay. Um, but once you find everything, I think they should be viable compared to each other. And those are numbers we can continuously look at. I, I think it's okay. Uh, one dual, dual one-hander is still not great, but not, mm -hmm. not terrible. Okay. Well, in theory, you get the benefit of the huge critical hit damage if you go with two weapons. As a, you obviously can't get that on a quiver. But there's so much AS on quivers and so many other stats. Mm -hmm. I have two other quivers over on the topic. You realize there's no white quivers right now, so you can't craft them. There are no white, white off-handed items. You can't get orbs or mojos either. Oh, uh, sounds like a bug. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they just don't drop any um, So there's well, no way to make craft of those items currently. I'll follow up on that afterwards. Um, make sure that gets looked at and fixed. The other issue on quivers is there is a spectacular amount of mods because essentially every single skill plus lots of other stuff. And if you don't roll one with CD, with a critical hit chance, I mean, when it rolls, it's just almost impossible to enchant to it, especially on a legendary. Yeah. I found four legendary quivers so far in ROS. None of them have had critical hit chance, and therefore none of them are really very viable. Yeah, crit chance remains a problem. Crit chance and crit damage remains a problem. Damage are a problem. Uh, we, I mean, we thought about doing different things to actively combat the problem, um, but We've instead, instead of doing something drastic um, and very punishing like a cap, we decided to just, you know, remove critical hit damage from rolling on weapons. Um, I think crit chances and also also doesn't roll on weapons except for I think a couple legendaries. Yeah. Um, we decided to give you less um, because they benefit from each other and scale with each other. Um, they're really good. Uh, that's kind of a whole different topic. Um, yeah, no great solutions right now. Uh, it remains a good stat. I'm just wondering about specifically on quivers because if you don't get it on the quiver, you know, it's just it's almost it's just so hard to, to enchant it compared to almost any other item in the game that doesn't have that many potential mods. Um, it's like the legendary quiver should have like at least like a five to ten percent roll guaranteed, so at least you'd have a chance to use it. Well, why do you say a crit chance on a quiver is more 
uh, necessary than crit chance on an amulet or something. Uh, I guess well, the amulet can roll uh, skill damage or something. Well, it's really nice on the amulet too. I mean, amulets and rings and, and gloves are obviously the hardest things to enchant. But just, I mean, if you go to, go to the enchantress and look at the quiver, and there's, cause, I mean, there's really like 32 options if you if you try to reroll. <laughs> and whereas uh, most offhand items, there's you know eight or ten or twelve. Yeah. Uh, I guess what you talked about is uh, overloading of a certain item slot, and that's something we did on purpose because. You know, um, on live amulets, you need to have trifecta rings, gloves. You gotta have trifecta, mm -hmm. or they suck. Yeah. Um, and rather than say preventing an item like an amulet from rolling one or more of the trifectas, and then you know making level 60 items with trifecta being a problem, maybe want to keep them. We decided to just overload the slot with uh, many more uh, awesome affixes like um, CDR or crit, uh, not crit. Um, skill damage on amulet that would make make it competitive so then when you roll any of those uh any combination of those then you have a pretty good item rather than say if you have just if you don't have the trifecta you have a shitty item yeah the um as it was like in the past if you said crit chance uh, trifecta and such are very important, but now you've implemented something like elemental damage, which is uh, also going to be something very uh, viable. You may be like, well, you know, I don't have trifecta, but I do have 20% increase of fire damage, and I'm using a fire ability and such. So those things do bring up for, um, you know, more effective DPS. That's what it seems like Reaper of Souls is all about, is the effective DPS and not the paper DPS, right? Uh, well, it, it's not like we said effective DPS is more important in Reaper. Mm -hmm. What we ended up uh, what we ended up designing are affixes that don't show up in your damage calculation because they're not always applicable. Mm -hmm. um, so things like CDR, resource cost reduction, uh, plus elemental damage, plus damage to skills. Um, and those are things that I do want to add to the details page. Uh, I have some yeah. plans for that. Um, but aside from that, there are things that we don't put into damage, so they just don't show up. And it wasn't because we didn't want things to show up in damage, it's just how the affixes ended up being designed. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking of something uh, very interesting talking about that discussion, and um, with the new elemental stuff that out, is out, some classes actually benefit much more with the elemental stuff, like the wizard, whereas they have things like uh, spectral blades with flame blades, which increases fire damage, and that's a skill that increases fire damage, whereas other classes are pretty much lacking in those areas where if you want to go with an elemental build and which seems like a very viable way to do a lot of damage uh, it looks like wizards are going to be the best at that I mean as they should be but what, what are you doing to balance that to make sure that all classes uh, can equally uh, put out balanced damage uh, um, so that doesn't get too crazy you know yeah uh, what happened in development was uh, the wizards uh, were worked on first just you know we picked a class to work on first, uh, mm -hmm. for the artists to work on first. And when the artists were working on the wizard, we decided to do all this elemental stuff um, as part of the wizard's kit, because they're really the most elemental class to begin with. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the three core concepts behind the wizard in the first place. And uh, the artists spent you know, a lot of time working on it, and then they got busy. So they didn't have as much time to work on the other classes. Um, but we never had plans to do all this elemental stuff in the first place. We thought up elemental damage as an item affix kind of late hmm. um, because elemental damage didn't work out as originally designed. Do you remember the design where lightning... Oh, wait. I don't know if this design was ever on beta, but this is a design I mean, where lightning all the causes... secondary effects. Yeah, it causes some lightning crits damage. Lightning crits and stuff. Yeah, and fire does a you know, crushing blow type damage. Yeah, that, that didn't work out for different reasons, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Because of that, we decided to pursue elemental damage in the skill direction and make them into item affixes, which worked out really well. So we then we said, hey, we've got these item affixes we want to do. Let's make sure the classes have this elemental stuff. Um, the wizard already had lots because it was designed into her skills. Oh, I'm DC from the game, I think. Oh, oh no, I'm good. Um, oh, you're still here. Uh, it was designed into her kit, and it was artified, so it, it was already working. So then we had to kind of, um, you know, do some lot of work later on. Uh, thank you, artists, to put elemental damage on a lot of the other classes, especially the ones who are more like melee focused. Like Barbarian is was pretty much all physical, everything, every day, yeah. all day. Um, 
we kind of did some last minute stuff to make that work. Mm -hmm. That's actually we, quite recent, yeah. We yeah, just the last patch, like half the skills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Half the skills and effects. Like, exactly. This is now lightning, this is now poison, yeah. this is now whatever. Mm -hmm. If you see Julian at their next BlizzCon, you can thank him for it. Julian, our lead uh, tech artist. Julian um, Love? Yeah, Julian Love. Wow, you know name. I didn't want to give last names, I didn't know if it was cool, but uh, there it is. Julian Love. Love I've actually known him since the Diablo 2 days. I saw him at BlizzCon a couple years ago. He's like, oh, Flaps, what's up? I haven't seen you in eight years. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, he plays a lot of Diablo 2. Uh, he shows just me Diablo 2 stuff once in a while. Um, continuing on the elemental discussion. We we have plans to add a lot more elemental stuff to all the classes, probably except the wizard, who already has mm -hmm. enough. I was thinking actually of a cool idea, just kind of throwing it out there. Um, I don't know what your guys' plans are, but you know how we had um, talent trees in Diablo 2? Maybe have elemental trees, which could make your, you know, could change things. You could have elemental stuff that does more damage, or maybe summons elemental pets, or whatever. I mean, I know this is such a huge change and would probably never come for a long time, but yeah. would that be something you would think about? <laughs> That's probably outside of the scope of something. <laughs> to do yeah, next, next patch, stuff. just throw that in there. Next, yeah. yeah, next patch. Yeah, let's get on. You it. got a month till launch. You can do it. Yeah, let's make it happen. Yeah. Hey, John, this is Sipco. One more uh, itemization question for you. Try and make it a little just narrower one. in scope. Yeah, maybe a couple combined. We'll see how things progress here. Um, what's the, what's your feeling, you know, around the concept of finding items randomly in the world? as opposed to having specific, say, bots or Rift Guardian loot tables that can drop items that even if it's not a guarantee, you know, you're not going to kill this monster and guaranteed an item, but similarly to how it's been done in the past with loot tables versus, you know, say, like, right now the game is heading toward crafting items that drop off specific monsters. Um, what's the thought of having random legendaries and random set items as opposed to giving players a way to control a little more deeply the way in which they farm for items? Um, we thought about that, definitely talked about that for a long time. Um, I bet. Uh, there was, there is a desire to let players be able to decide what item they can find. You know, sort of, uh, I don't have a good weapon, I'm going to farm these five yeah. bosses who have a good chance of crossbow. Exactly. Um, that, hmm, we didn't decide to do that because... Why, why, don't you th why don't you think of that for a second? I'll tell you what I think about it. Because the reason behind, I think, one of the things that Kadala tried to do was give players a little bit more control over legendaries, and that became very hard to balance. And I think there's a lot of things like that. I think the rift bag, you know, uh, potential drops that are specific to those rift acts, I mean, those bounty bags that are specific to various acts are a yeah. good way of doing it as well, right? So that's something that's additional. And I think having the ability to go after a specific monster to complete a set would be a really cool concept as well. It gives players a little bit of control. Oh, yeah. Um, real quick, um, Kadala is one area where you can try to kind of target find, and it is, uh, you know, you probably spend all your blood shards on the weapon um, if you didn't right. have a good weapon. For completing sets, um, it is a potential problem that when I have three out of four pieces of my set, or five out of six or whatever, the last piece is incredibly hard to find, and takes a really long time to find that last item. Uh, that's why we made the Ring of Warrior Grandeur. It gives you, it's like a stopgap item to help you complete your set. And then when you finally complete your set, you can take that item off and put something else on in its place. Yeah, I think those are good measures, and I, I like them. I think they're definitely in the right direction, as well as the bounty bag. I think that's really cool as well. Um, I, I still think it would have been really cool. And I love, by the way, the crafting materials are specifically dropping off types of monsters. Um, Definitely worth something. Definitely worth looking at again, in my opinion, to consider having loot tables on, say, Rift Guardians. I would love to see that Rift Guardians could drop something, or a boss in particular, whether that's, it be you know, Belial or something that's else. That's a potential idea for the future. Yeah. Yeah. You guys actually talked about that earlier on. You said you were thinking about doing that, but you didn't want players to only farm those things, kind of like in Diablo 2, and let's go, you know, farm this or farm that, you know, farm a certain boss. Um, so maybe that's another thing that's kind of holding you back on that. You want players out into the world and doing bounties and doing rifts and such. Yeah, the problem of flipping games to do the same thing over and over, it's, I mean, it's fun for a time, but if you don't get what you want after a certain number of runs, you get really annoyed that this is all you can do. 
Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of a design problem with it. Um, real quick, I'm being told I have five minutes left. Um, oh, wow. So maybe <laughs> just a. I think we start a little late, so uh, you know, five yeah. minutes, a couple more questions. Maybe can I questions. Uh, can I ask one more question, and maybe can we take a couple of viewer questions? We got 962 people in here that have been begging to get their questions answered. Yeah, go uh, for it. Okay, so for me, um, I personally really enjoy this game. I've been playing the beta since I got into it. Um, I want to keep playing it for a long period of time. What kind of progressions are you guys making towards uh, making us have longevity behind the game instead of just doing bounties, just doing riffs? As fun as they are, uh, eventually it's going to get old, you know? Is there going to be additional things other than Ubers in the future that you can maybe talk about or give some kind of hint towards? Um, that kind of keep players like, oh, I'm gonna buy Diablo right now, you know, like get them hyped. Yeah, the problem with um, you know, telling people what they might get in a future patch early is, if things don't work out for whatever reason, then people will call you and get mad about it. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely not um, designers' position to talk about future things, but mm -hmm. we have ideas, solid ideas in place that I think will help progression in the future. Um, mm -hmm. And, you'll follow, uh, you'll follow you then. and real quick here, the because um, I had a lot of questions here, but I mean I got most of them answered, which is great. I just want to end with the uh, Paragon portraits. Are we going to be getting more portraits in the future? And also, when you get to Paragon 800, you're no longer getting stats anymore. So, um, is there going to be something? Uh, is the cap going to be raised from 50 on each one of those, or? Um, so that players that took the time to get to Paragon 801 actually go, wow, I'm here, but I don't get anything, you know? Oh, core. yeah. After after you max out on everything, all your points go to the core stat, the core page. Oh, okay. Just the main stat, yeah. basically. Yeah. And okay. uh, the, portraits, the portraits, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure about the portraits. Sounds like okay. a good idea, though. Yeah, yeah. All right, so guys, if you want to ask some questions, he doesn't have very much longer. I know a lot of people are asking about the Imperious Wings. They have talked about that before, and I'm sure yeah, they said don't he's ask not going to. Yeah, I'm sure he's not going to have a comment on that. Um, and uh, same goes for ladders and PvP as well too. So if you guys have some questions you want to ask real quick, uh, he, you know, we are kind of strapped for time here, and he's been nice enough to lend his time to us. So. Um, what are some questions you guys have? I see one right here. Um, ask about the clan uh, cap. This is coming from Azuris. Um, is there a reason why it's capped at 150, or is that going to be raised in the future? Or? Um, I was yeah, not involved in the ago. clan's design, but the okay. idea behind having a cap at all is if there are so many people in the clan, like say 500, that you know, whoever, everybody joins. I don't know who's in the clan. I don't know these people. It starts to feel more like a community and less like a clan. Yeah. Um, that's the basic idea. I really can't get any specifics behind that. I wasn't involved in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have an easy item question for you on my list. Yeah. Socketing item. benefits are wildly dispro, especially for witch doctors and wizards. I mean, you're you're pretty much guaranteed to have like 700 res all from your main stat. You know, you have 7,000 res at high right. level, and Absolutely. you're putting a, you're, you're putting 280 in a socket. That also gives you 28 res all, which is really beneficial. So, I mean, you, you compare like a wizard to a demon hunter. The de wizard's going to have guaranteed like 700 more res all, mm -hmm. and whereas the demon hunter has dodge, which no one likes anyway. Oh, okay. So that ties into like the big problem of the three stats. Um, uh, you know, a demon hunter gets 100 dex, strength classes get 100 strength, and classes get 100 int. Um, and int and strength are better than dex in the, in the secondary benefits. Yeah, um, I think, I looked at the numbers earlier today. Um, I think the amount of survivability that dex provides is about 15 to 20% uh, lower than the amount that int and strength provides. You can do this, you test yourselves. Just put yourself at 5,000 armor, 5,000 int, um, and just compare all those stats like that. That's about 15 to 20% off. I think I want to look at maybe tuning the dodge formula a bit or giving the Demon Hunter specifically other ways to benefit from dodge. Um, dodge is a problem in and of itself because, you know, a lot of EHP peers, um, I'm kind of one of them, wouldn't consider dodge a real survivability stat because it's random and, you know, your number of hits to death is not great with dodge. Um, on an infinite scale, dodge is great, it works as 
advertise, but you know, given the 10 second death timer, um, dodge is not super reliable. That said, uh, I think Demon Hunter as a class is ranged and has many tools to survive uh, burst damage and oh shit moments. Um, and maybe has the most tools to survive oh shit moments, um, aside from a cheat death path, which I do want to add. Um, aside from that, dodge, the, the main complaint, um, one of the main complaints is dodge doesn't work on unavoidable damage. We've tried to make a lot of things dodgeable in a game when they make sense, like sand wasps. Uh, we recently changed sand wasps projectiles to also be dodgeable. Um, they weren't in vanilla, uh, but I think there can be more done, like poop on the ground, you still can't dodge, desecrator, uh, plague, etc. I was just talking to Joe, our, our monster designer today, about what we can do about that. He plays a demon hunter also, and I think a good idea is to add some kind of AoE damage reduction to a passive like awareness. I think that's what I want to do um, in a future patch mm -hmm. to add maybe 30% AoE damage reduction to that passive for demon hunters only. And then all the poop on the ground, you just take 30% less damage from. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. As, Especially because resistance is hard yeah. to get. With a demon yeah, hunter. it's it's the problem mm -hmm. in parity. When someone says armor and resist all works for Desecrator, but dodge doesn't, I really don't have a good answer because there is none. Um, so that's something I definitely want to do. And the answer is not Blizzard hates demon hunters. I have a Paragon 100 Demon Hunter. I love Demon Hunters. It's my main <laughs> class. I plan to play it when it ships. Um, yeah, my my favorite character in Diablo 2 was an Amazon. Had 98 Amazon and a 99 Sorceress. Um, I plan to play Demon Hunter until the end of days. Also Barbarian. I love Barbarian too. Mm -hmm. You love all the classes. No, just those two. I have Paragon 100. <laughs> okay, okay, so Blizzard hates monks then. No, no, no. Dawn, assassin too? Dawn loves monks. You can talk to Dawn about monks tomorrow. <laughs> uh, the big question, I think, to sum it up here, because we are running out of time here, a lot of people are asking about Loot 2.0. Can you get us any information? Is it going to be launching before the game comes out, or are we going to have to wait to the expansion? Loot 2.0? Yeah, like what's the being tested on. What's, yeah, what's being tested on the PTR currently to be implemented oh. before, maybe by the, when the auction house goes down, or maybe a little bit before. Um. Two point, patch 2.01 is going to have loot 2.0. Um, yeah, yeah. And it will be out before Reaper ships. So okay. that's about it. Sometime right. between today and March 25th. Sweet. Good to know. People always ask questions you can't answer. It's amazing. <laughs> They're uncanny at that. Yeah, PR is better. PR and community, they should be the ones publicizing big information like that. So yeah, they yeah. don't want to. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I think that's all the time I have for today. It was great talking to you guys. I'd love to do this again. Um, yeah, me too. I'd love yeah. to sit down and just chat on you with you, even one on one or or whatever. I mean, the fact that you did this, I want to thank you on behalf of myself and also the community here as well. We're all very, um, you know, happy that you could take the time to do this. I know you're very busy. You got a big launch coming up, and I wish you luck with everything you have to do. And uh, once again, thank you for uh, for hanging out with us and answering some questions. Thanks a lot, Shinobi, Sipco, Flux. It's great talking to you guys. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. See ya. Cheers. All right, guys. Well, that is it. Um, I wanted to... I did talk about two-handers. I, I wanted to make sure that they... I talked about how like the two-handers are good on a demon hunter but not on a bar because we have a quiver and he did kind of answer that a little bit and they're trying to work on that <clears throat> so um i do want to say though um i was trying i have like you can see right here check this out guys like these are my list of questions and i couldn't even get to a lot of them like i didn't get to about these ones here and some of the ones inside here i couldn't get to i mean we were really strapped for time and I did feel like I was a little bit pushy on my questions because I wanted to get to more questions and I wanted to represent the community a little bit better. And if I did come off as being uh, rude or something like that, I do apologize for that. Um, but uh, overall, I couldn't get to as many questions as I wanted to. And a lot of people were spamming the same thing in chat, like Imperious Wings, Imperious Wings. And they actually told us, um, you know, that it's something that we're not really going to be talking about. So. Um, you know, some of these things, they, he, like he said at the end of it there, uh, he's not really geared towards some of these questions. He's more on like the class stuff and 
more on like uh, those kinds of things. And I try to keep my questions a lot more Demon Hunter, a lot more class, uh, a lot more items, legendaries, mystic, things like that, more relatable towards those type of things.